Hi guys, welcome to my crib. <laughs> this is my family's house, uh, but my office is upstairs. I mean, come in. So my my office is actually a corridor. <laughs> it's not actually it's not actually a room. It's not an enclosed room. So this is welcome to the studio. <laughs> Essentially, a long corridor facing, and it's quite good real estate, lah. Actually, feels quite Japanese, but it's not bad. So, welcome to, welcome to my office. <laughs> so basically, uh, my name's Sam, or Sam, people call me Sam as well. So I'm one half of uh, architecture design studio Notu Scale, with uh, another co-founder, uh, Nona Dra. We do a mix of works ranging from architectural installations to artworks. We're trying to get into designing more built things, such as houses, but as of right now, it's mostly, you could say, speculative work or engaged to the arts. Uh. So, no to scale is very much a nomadic studio. We are mobile. I work here. This is, this is pretty much my office. Uh, Aja has an office at her house. The platform for working together is WhatsApp, Telegram. We have virtually like online lah, in terms of the office so a lot of people like ask you like, can I work at your office right so and then it's a bit hard to say or oh, we don't have an office like uh, but we, we have a platform online so in a way I mean going into this COVID situation pun, like, oh you realize that oh, this might be the way forward and we've been doing this for about like, almost five years lah. what we're interested in is basically a mixture of what you, I mean, this, this, this is like what we cover, like basically art, design, architecture, uh, a bit uh, like culture, culture goes into it because I think a lot of our works is also based on social commentary works. It's based on trying to relate uh, the design or artwork to a certain, certain socio-economic um, issue currently going on. Lah. For me, the way I started out is that uh, I'm an architecture. Basically, I'm trained as an architect. Lah. I studied architecture in UITM for my degree. So and then in my masters, uh, I did I did it in in the UK in University of Greenwich. So I think uh, doing architecture in Malaysia, uh, studying it in Malaysia is different. And then going overseas is different in terms of what uh, your understanding of design is, big because because you are exposed to a lot more different ideologies. Uh. The the turning point for me to think uh, differently about design. Kejap, kejap. This one is essentially you could say it's a it's a physical collage lah. It's a it's a kiwi drone because it's essentially I bought the kiwi from Amazon and I bought the the drone wings from Amazon, a broken one lah. For me, macam it's it's a, it's about collaging juga macam. So this is was one of my earlier ni lah, my, one of my earlier projects. This is. A plastic stool. Uh. This is uh, from recycled plastic. This is ba bangku tapau. This was the idea of uh, the other co-founder, lah, Adra. So Adra, she went to a plastic making workshop in London, and she learned how to basically DIY your own plastic chair. So this was this was uh, this was for a competition, lah. But the narrative was that uh, it's called bangku tapau, lah. The narrative was to envision a bangku chair in in a sustainable material, lah. But I guess we, we try to do design, but and then we try to overlap it with art, like, like trying to engage with the art as a medium, not necessarily calling it art, but we like the idea of uh, doing something, uh, but borrowing a characteristic from somewhere else, like maybe from art, ke, or maybe art, uh, architecture into art. Ke. So we like, we like that transposing of, of ideas. Like what. So um, we'll quickly run through what we have, la, basically. This is stuff like random stuff I accumulated, but I think I like the, I like the juxtaposition of stuff. You know, like, okay, I, I showed you the Kiwi drone, uh, stuff from, I don't know, like a butterfly in a, in a, in a bell jar, uh, Villa Savoie next to Kaaba, my grandma's uh, I, uh, box. Uh, so, I mean, a lot of pop, pop culture references in here, like pop culture. Uh, 
co- uh, no, no graphic novels, toys, artworks from relatives, um, uh, artworks from artists, friends, ajim, ajim to ajims, um, books, mockups or models. This is actually this is actually uh, uh, whose work? Martin Martin Creed's work. <laughs> But I, I bought it for five pounds. It was cheap, but I, I didn't know who he was. I bought it because the cover was nice. So it's an LP, la, but I don't have a player. So, it's bad. so other than that, um, I mean, random, random things. But I guess all these things like put, put, uh, put things into different perspectives, la, just overlaying. Again, stuff from Ajim, because I, I collab a lot with Ajim in terms of, uh, I guess, interviews, couple. So we exchange. Uh, our services by providing artworks, uh, and then I have some some stuff from Blank, uh, local artist Blank Adam, Adam. Uh, over here we have uh, Donald Abraham. I got it from Shabandi. Uh, is that Arif's work? Is that Arif? And uh, this is like uh, these are like basically things. Which um, I try to do to get fragments of ideas. La. So, and then much like stuff like this, and then my, my daughter chanting. So, it eventually becomes her drawing. La. There's actually, that, that's also her drawing over there when she was four, I think. So, um, other than that, um, yeah, much like I collect a lot of books. I collect books to, to basically have an archive la, of things that, um, that is interesting to me. I like pop culture because there's something that's, uh, that everyone can, can tune into. La. So I like this one, Sang Corruptor, <laughs> by, by uh, Good Guys Never Win, Indonesian company, politician, yes. <laughs> so I mean, I, I, like, I like things that because when you go pop, you can, you can go to a large mass like, of understanding. La, macam, I think in terms of no to scale, what no to scale does one, it's quite pop in a way. We wouldn't say what we do is is, is intellectual. Maybe pseudo intellectual. But it's mostly much like relating to pop lah. So, contoh like, macam, um, for example, much like we try to take uh, a heavy issue and then we try to distill it down into a format, young people would get. Everyone can get, if 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 you have knowledge or you don't have, if you don't have knowledge. So, for example, much like one of my one of much like, uh, I'm not sure about Adra lah, but one of my references is Italian radical Italian design. I I really like uh, the Italian radicals from Florentine from the 70s. So uh, there are, there are a group of designers and architects lah that were quite radical in the 70s in Italy. Super Studio, Akizum, uh, apa UFO eh? uh, UFO UFO. Eh? A lot of uh, there, there's a quite a big group of them lah, but they they engage with objects, they engage with other things beyond the building, uh, like yeah, set design, discourse. So I think that's important to to add into this discussion. So, but I think much like, within the architecture industry, the industry itself is quite serious lah, and we think that I don't know why can't there be more humor lah? Like, we feel lah. We, we like the banner la, and the mundane actually. Like I collect a lot of much um, a, a lot of things as reference la, such as uh, this is a sponge brick. <laughs> I don't know, I like it because uh, because it, 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 it enables me to relate uh, to different things. Like same as the Kiwi drone, this one much as an object it makes you it makes you reconfigure your reality la, in terms of the way you see things. Yeah, and I think you go me. Uh, so you guys asked about the one of the uh, works this year, which is Padang Masyarakat. So Padang Masyarakat is a is an art piece trying to depict what 2020 was, lah, basically. So it's trying to encapsulate the scenarios that's happening over COVID, over political issues, anxieties that we face as, as Malaysians and as global citizens, like trying to endure benda ni sekali. It's illustrated as an image in a large plane, infinite plane which is Padang Masha. Padang Masha is actually in, in, in Islam, you have a place where you transition after death before you 
get judged. So that's Paramasha. It's infinite, and then everyone is placed there. But it's of of course it's fictional again. But we referenced it of uh, one of uh, one of Super Studios' work, which is an infinite monument. I think one of the one of the pieces lah. So they envision a, like an environment where global utopia sort of overtakes the world. But we wanted to put it like in a different light. It's not really about capitalism. It's it's about everyone feeling the same thing all over the world. What's interesting about how that reaction to that work got off is that I think people related to it. Everyone feels like like they, they know what's going on when they see that image. Everyone can recall something of their own personal experiences from that large landscape of Padang Masyarakat. Lah. Masyarakat is like society. Lah kan? So that's where I guess the totality of the image came about. Other than that, we are producing works for future shows such as um, we got one with 13 May exhibition curated by Rebecca and Azad. So that, that is going on in January. So we're developing an installation for that. Other than that, uh, we recently uh, had like a small digital show in Hong Kong as part of the Archigram Cities um, exhibition. So our drawing uh, of basically kampung houses from Kampung Baru floating and then being paraded off by the by the settlers lah into Padang Merdeka. I mean, we we try to do things quite in a manner quite pop, but uh, we we try to weave in other narratives of social issues of maybe um, things happening right now, but we can't really encapsulate it in a concrete manner lah. Something need to be quite ambiguous in its reading because I think questioning is quite important even though you don't find the answers but I think our work posits a question that people would would think lah macam what is what is the solution if there is a solution and should there be a solution and that's where most of our work uh, goes to I guess that those type of directions lah before no to scale there was we were part of a collective called Sesi Seni. So Sesi Seni came out of university years, lah, basically, degree under at UITM Shah Alam. So it was basically a, you know, a fun group to do, to do things not related to architecture, installation, art. It wasn't serious, but it was good in a way that it, it's a starting point for doing uh, creative endeavors beyond, beyond school hours, like, right? beyond, beyond studying. Right? So we did zines, you know, we compiled them into a series of thematical write-ups. Lah, macam this ralat, which basically means error. So whatever the, whatever the person translates about the meaning of ralat goes in there. Lah. Ralat, rukun. Rukun means uh, it's a series of principles, correct? Here, this is like 2015, lah, the last. But then some people in here are, uh, you know, are, are like artists now. Pamela Tan. She's a designer, but she's quite she's quite out there right now. And then, who else? You have Sheila. Sheila is a is, is another friend architect, but she's also a visual artist. Uh, so, Cairo, uh, Cairo, I did the the Balai Seni artwork with is in here as well. So I guess being part of a collective and growing a collective is about, much like, I'm seeing the development of uh, your friends grow, your peers grow. Uh, quoting uh, an Italian designer lah. Uh, but he said that collectives are like a meteor. They should appear out of nowhere, burn up, and then abyss. Because that's the that's the energy of, of a collective. Lah. They're, they're here for, for a short time. They're like active, like active lah, five years max, and then they burn up, but and then they, they move on. And I think that's how collectives should be. And I think as as young creatives, I think tak kisah lah, whatever field you are, you, you, you should start off by being a part of something. Because I think individually it's hard to be confident with what you have, right? But if, you, if you're if like part of a large group of creative-minded people, I mean, you just be like, you belong to something much bigger than, than what you feel you are. And I think it's important for young kids to know. Lah, right? All geniuses aren't really alone. I mean, they're part of a collective of geniuses where there's a network so you can't really say that you're creative because you're a, 
like a soul genius, but because of your surroundings, uh, because of the people you meet, you talk about. So I think these are these are important things uh, that from from our past that I think we're looking back, I cherish lah. Uh, yeah. So guys, thanks for coming up, <laughs> looking at my trip, and hope to see you soon. Thank you, Ilham. Thank you. Uh, do you want to shut the door? <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah shut the door. door. Oh, okay. we, should, we, we should try to shut the door. Well, I should go inside. <laughs> 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 <la